this may be a bit complicated to explain, and so I hope I'm able to do so. Remember this video I did back in March, or this video I did back in May of this year, regarding the COP27 meetings in November? As students of prophecy, we know all about how religious leaders will use their church and state powers in all nations to lobby for and then enforce Sunday laws, using the excuse that in so doing, it'll somehow stop all the disasters they claim are the end result of climate change, but the Bible calls the final signs of Christ's return. Many in the Seventh-day Remnant movement have been keeping an eye on this for many, many years. So much so, I have a massive article and video list located here on my website. What I'm about to share may awaken some of the scoffers who have said for years we're never going to see religious laws, even though prophecy is quite clear on this. In fact, every time you see the mark of the beast mentioned in prophecy, the word worship is right there with it. You know, this is why all the world's religious leaders are going to be gathering in November of this year. Soon, all these apostate preachers that have already created an image to the beast system in Rome, which in the USA is confirmed, fulfilled by the 501c3 church and state contract they all signed on to, these church leaders will soon use their church and state power to force as many as they can to obey them over the Creator God by passing a law that makes them unable to buy and sell unless they disobey the God of creation and obey the man of sin in Rome by keeping Sunday holy. As soon as they weed out all the weak Christians, they will need to increase pressure designed to force the obedient remnant Christians who still refuse to disobey the God they love. These government-approved preachers will then use their church and state power to speak, which means to legislate, and cause, which means to enforce, a law that will make it legal to kill the obedient Christians that refuse to bow to the man-made Sabbath of the Pope. This prophecy located in Revelation 13, 15 says they will eventually pass a bill allowing for worldwide Christian genocide in all nations. After passing the bill, they will then set a date to have them killed all over the world in the exact same way it all went down in the book of Esther, if you recall. What we're looking at is the prophecy known as the one hour with the beast, wherein the Pope becomes the leader of the new world order that every serious Christian needs to study up on, as that hour is coming very soon now that the Pope is already setting dates for it. Notice this PDF file that is being sent to many Roman-controlled preachers the world over. Oh, and by the way, if they change, archive it, or even delete it, not to worry, I now have it on my server located here. On top of all this, Newsweek actually posted an article titled, For Our Sin of Emissions, 10 Plus 1 Climate Commandments. Well, that all being said, let's take a look at their PDF invitation. It's a short invite, and so it won't take too long. Check it out. It says, Between November 6th and the 18th of 2022, the United Nations Climate Conference of COP27 will take place on the Sinai Peninsula in Sharm el Sheikh in Egypt. Religious communities and religious leaders have a key role to play in addressing climate change and climate justice which requires deep transformation within society. The knowledge of what changes are critically needed to diminish long-term harm to the planet is readily available. However, bringing about change in action demands deeper changes in attitude, a change of heart. This has been the domain of religions for millennia. Religions are sources of inspiration for the transformation of heart and the ensuing changes of attitude. Well, let's stop here for a minute. We see that besides the fact that well over 30,000 scientists proved in writing that the Pope's global warming claims were bad signs, 
meaning the handful of bought and paid for Vatican scientists, who I just found out recently are mostly Jesuits, they are confirmed now as liars with a political agenda. I am sure that these very same words were used at the start of the Inquisition of the Roman Catholic Church during that prophesied 1,260-year rampage that saw 500 million Christians killed for refusing to bow to the popes of Rome. Continuing in their PDF invite, it says, On Sunday, November 13th, religious leaders will return to Mount Sinai, a mountain whose memory and meaning loom large as a place of revelation in the collective consciousness of Christianity, Judaism, Islam, and others. It is a site for turning to God and receiving God's message. Well, first and foremost, the Creator God will not be present that day. And so claiming he will speak from the mount will fail in the exact same way the prophets of Baal tried to get their false god to speak from Mount Carmel in Elijah's day. Those religious leaders that will be gathering that day do not keep his law, proving they have not the promised Holy Spirit within that was to write God's law on the fleshly tables of the heart as Paul puts it in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 3. The fact they are gathering on the long-prophesied day of the pagan sun gods of Rome and not the true Sabbath of the Creator God proves there is not a true Christian or any religious leader in that group. In fact, as Jesus declared in Matthew 24, 11, these are some of the many false prophets that shall arise and shall deceive many. You should check out my video on this. And so anyway, continuing, the Vatican contrived invite says, we return to Sinai in a movement of repentance and quest. We seek a new vision for humanity and its endangered existence. And we seek to receive and amplify a message of life-sustaining living and habits that humanity needs to hear today. In this spirit, the project partners will bring together premier religious leaders from the world's major religions to gather upon Mount Sinai to engage in a first-ever climate repentance ceremony and to put forth a prophetic interreligious call to action. Climate justice, 10 universal commandments. Well, first of all, they say they're going to return to Sinai. They, nor their forefathers, wherever at Mount Sinai. Unless, of course, you count some of the Jews. If they were children of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, they would not be seeking God at Sinai while worshiping on the Vatican's admitted pagan Sunday Sabbath. They would be there in true repentance, seeking to obey his law. They would be meeting to save souls and not the very planet that pagans are known to worship along with the sun, the moon, and the stars. And by the way, for those that believe Sunday laws are not going to happen, explain why they are meeting at Mount Sinai. The popes have been very vocal about demanding all break God's law so that they keep their law for centuries. They've even put their boastful demands in writing. One such quote out of many says that the Bible says, Remember that thou keep holy the Sabbath day. The Catholic Church says, No, by my divine power. I abolish the Sabbath day and command you to keep the first day of the week. And lo, the entire civilized world bows down in reverent obedience to the command of the Holy Catholic Church. Can you see Satan speaking through this priest? If not, you need to study your Bible. And as for their claim this is all prophetic, well, they are kind of correct here, but not in a good way whatsoever. For not only will they refuse to give a single Bible verse to prove their gathering is prophetic, students of prophecy do see this as a prophetic event indeed. See my climate change will lead to the mark page when you get time. I have all sorts of evidence for you to look over regarding how prophecy says they are doing this so as to gain the power to enforce the long prophesied religious laws that scripture calls the mark of the beast. And for those that don't think they have all their ducks in a row that will allow them to enforce those laws in every nation on earth, check out my blog when you get time, wherein I show every aspect of the pandemic 
allowed for them to not only lock down society from the banks to the schools, they also have the ability to track every person on the planet now. For a quick summary on this, see my five-minute video about the Pope's fingerprints being all over this pandemic. But anyway, continuing in the PDF invite, it says, The call's originality in compiling the finest teachings of all religions in support of climate justice draws inspiration from the great prophetic figures associated with Mount Sinai. Teachings and spiritual ideals will be highlighted in order to help religious communities and humanity at large open their hearts to change for our collective survival. The ceremony will draw from liturgies, readings, and the musical traditions of diverse religions. The event will incorporate concrete examples of how religious communities are actively meeting the climate change challenge and feature concrete initiatives that translate the border spiritual practice into action. In other words, stopping here for a minute, they're about to vindicate every single student to prophecy in the Seventh-day Remnant movement that have been declaring for decades that they will use climate change to con all national leaders into enforcing Sunday laws. And their listed goals in this PDF invite confirms this hands down. Check it out. It says the first goal is inspire and unleash the power of religions, religious leaders, and faith communities as change agents for climate change and as sources for inspiring and motivating discussions among politicians and civil bodies. Their next goal is to motivate action among religious communities and the wider public to curb climate change. Their next goal is to invite media to cover religious leaders' advocacy in combating climate change. Next, they plan to promote a coalition of religious leaders to work together for climate action. And then finally, they say that they're going to generate new faith-inspired climate education materials for broad use. And so if you read on in this PDF invite, you will see that they plan to have Hollywood celebrities known for their climate change activism. And so I wonder, how many under their web of deception will catch the fact that this is in no way to be considered religious in nature. It's all political. Unless, of course, their true religion is in fact paganism. As every student of the Bible knows, this is what we're looking at here. And so, as prophesied, all the world has wondered after the beast in Rome, which we all know is pagan to the core. You know, this is why so many operatives from the Vatican have been trying to promote an anti-Paul agenda, seeing how he was the apostle called of God to preach to the Gentiles back then as well as today. See my two videos I did on this recently to see what I mean here. As for their list of partners in the PDF invite, they're all part of the Pope's long prophesied ecumenical agenda that was given life in the 1960s during the Vatican II Council. What we're looking at here, brothers and sisters, is that the latter rain is soon to fall upon only the obedient remnant people. Soon we will go out to proclaim globally what the mark of the beast truly is. Therefore, this climate change fiasco is merely based on trying to hide the fact that Christ is coming a lot sooner than even they realize. And so it is the prayer of this ministry and everyone in the SDR movement, that you will come to know the Lord Jesus as Savior, Creator, and King, so as to have the eyes that see, ears to hear, and a heart that understands what's already begun in these final days of life on earth. And by the way, for those scoffers out there that claim this is all just a bogus prophecy about climate change and Sunday laws, if that's true, why are they doing exactly as prophecy said they would do. Thank you for watching. God bless.